our next speaker is Jeroen Derwoord. And uh, since uh, he got his first computer when he was 11, he was all about programming. But then he now is the CEO of Game Basics, and now the game is his passion. Um, they created Online Soccer Manager, which is an online game uh, played by over 4 million people on a monthly basis, so it's huge. And as his LinkedIn profile reads, Game Basics, it's all in the name, we love the game, football is our passion, we stick to the basics. So, we love to hear all about that. Please welcome to the stage, Jeroen. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, well, I'm going to talk about uh, three uh, topics today. Um, the first one is an introduction. Now, you heard uh, a little bit of introduction uh, uh, just now, but uh, a little bit more about Game Basics, Online Soccer Manager, and about me. Uh, then about uh, the growth of Game Basics. Uh, Game Basics started out very small, and we are now with 40 people, so I'm going to tell a little bit about how that went. And the last topic I will uh, talk the most, I have most about the last topic, and that's about the new version of OSM, which was released uh, just a few, few weeks ago, 11 May. Um, and with that, we boosted our revenue and our retention of our game. And I think it's a, a lesson that everybody can learn from uh, how we did that and, uh, and which, which made it possible to, uh, to do that. So first, about a little bit about me. Uh, I always like to talk about games, and uh, so I picked a few that I like. I think that uh, uh, games tell a lot about uh, the person who is playing it. And, uh, well, I play Clash Royale and uh, Hearthstone and um, well Halo. I, I completed all the sequels of Halo and also Dominations uh, currently. And this, these games I uh, spend a lot of time on. Um, and I enjoy them. And these are mostly casual games. So I'm a casual gamer. I'm not a hardcore gamer. And if you look at the market of casual games, um, it has grown a lot the last years. Uh, this shows the what a game, casual game on mobile makes every day. And this is just iOS in the US. So if you look at uh, Game of War, which is currently the top uh, mobile game, uh, it makes one and a half million dollars per day on iOS only in the US. So that's really a huge amount of, mo of money. I wish our, our game made so much money. But it's uh, there are a few other games which are uh, huge blockbusters. Uh, you can see it over here. And of course, if you count Android and other platforms, it will be even more. So what does the Netherlands do in this area? What's the biggest game in the Netherlands? Does anyone know? No? Of course, you if you read my talk uh, description, you, you would know it. It's Online Soccer Manager. Um, we have 4 million players worldwide, uh, 1.3 million per day, and uh, it's a social football management game. Now, who of you have heard, has heard about Online Soccer Manager? Great. So then I don't have to explain the whole game uh, to you. But what I want to do is uh, to come in the right mood. I want to start a video. It's just one minute, and it uh, gives you, uh, well, it, br it brings you in the right mood for, uh, for the game. So here it goes. Football. It can be a beast. It will tear you to the ground. You're yesterday's headline. You've had your day. Loser is not a term to be taken lightly. He's the reality. If you back down, you'll be forgotten. Pick yourself up. There's no glory in defeat, only lessons. Learn them. Understand them. Use them to lead your team to victory. Tame the game. Use your skill to run a real club, play with real players, and challenge your friends. Online Soccer Manager. Play for free now by downloading the app. So, do you like it? This is uh, the video that we made for our new version. Uh, which came out so a few uh, weeks ago. So uh, this is tells the story about what OSM is. You become the manager of your favorite football team. And of course, it's a hard job, but uh, everybody wants to be the uh, manager of their favorite football team. That is, uh, well, the, the concept of online soccer manager. So how does this work? Just basic three steps. Uh, you manage the team, 
you, uh, your match is being simulated, you don't have to play yourself. And then you check your results and you can uh, watch a scoreboard or you, or you can uh, see who scored and uh, you can see uh, who got a suspension or a, or a red card. Uh, and this is a daily cycle. So this uh, is just 10 minutes a day. And this is what all our players, 4 million of them, do every day. Now then the, the players that we have uh, by platform. So as you can see, 82% uh, plays through apps. In the beginning, that was uh, browser-based. And uh, in a two, two or three years, everybody moved to the, uh, the app, apps, mobile apps. So that's a very quick transition that we had there. By language, we have uh, 24 languages, and we have a solution that uh, make, makes it possible to very quickly translate the game in another language. And it's very important to have different languages for, uh, for a game, uh, especially since a lot of uh, people between 12 and 25 play this game. And uh, yeah, the, if we only had an English version, people in Saudi Arabia wouldn't be able to play it. And as you can see, the Middle East is a very big region uh, for online soccer manager. Also Turkey and Spain, and uh, s uh, Southern uh, America. So, but we didn't uh, start out this big. Um, we started out uh, 15 years ago. I created an online soccer manager in my attic room. And uh, well, since then it has uh, seen a lot of growth. And not only the game itself with all the, the, the players, but also uh, the team. We are now a team of 40 people. And uh, when I started, I had a very small server, which was uh, in my parents' place, under the stairs. So you can see it here. It's uh, this, uh, this machine here. It's just a computer that we didn't use. And uh, I think over 1,000 people played uh, Online Soccer Manager uh, back then. And our internet connection was, yeah, we couldn't internet ourselves anymore because everybody was accessing the website. So my parents weren't very happy with me at that time. Uh, and it, of course, this wasn't the way how we it could uh, stay. So um, after a while, we re-rented an office and the server was moved to a data center. And the first of the office that we rented um, was not uh, this building because this is a prison, but it's uh, next to this building. And we were on the second floor and we could uh, see the prisoners make their rounds. So it kept us on the earth uh, to know that we were on the good side of the wall. And uh, after that, we went to another office, and uh, two years ago, we uh, got a very nice one, I think. Uh, it's in Zoetermeer. It's a football stadium office. Of course, we are all about football, so we thought, how can we express this? How can we make it interesting workplace for football-loving uh, uh, employees? And we created this. And there is a, there's a goal here, and there's a, 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 a big stand. And uh, you can, you if, if you come in, you go through uh, the, the, the catacombs. So this is really uh, a football stadium. And a very nice place to work. Uh, work. And if you, uh, you can come, come by and get coffee with us, but you can also view this on uh, Google Street View. So if you're curious. So this is all great. And we had a great time with this, doing this. And of course, the game uh, is, is big. So uh, we are in a good place. Uh, but still, we thought it could it had to be better. Uh, we faced some problems uh, with this game, even though uh, a lot of people enjoyed it. The growth stopped. We were at 4 million monthly active players, and there we, we stayed. So we thought, what can we do? And what is, what is happening here? Why is this happening? Why is our game not growing anymore? We are investing money. We are investing new people uh, to, to think of new concepts, and it doesn't work. So we started to look at it from the outside in again. And we, we said, what is going wrong? Well, one thing that is happening in the marketplace is that there are a lot of apps. This is no surprise for anyone, I think. Uh, but there are 1.5 million apps in the App Store. And uh, to stand out from that is very difficult. For Online Soccer Manager, this is the same. Even though we have a very ins large installed user base, it's still difficult. And we also face some very s uh, significant competition uh, this is, for example, Top 11 and uh, Club Manager. Um, these are big players. They also have football management game, not as good as ours, of course. But yeah, some people, they have a lot of marketing budget. So uh, that's difficult for us. And the last reason is that we went into the era of post-PC devices. And of course, we created a beautiful app. But it was still an app uh, 
meant to be played from a PC. So we had um, one time a day, for example, that you log in and do all your settings, and it's not of this time. You ha you need uh, to log in m multiple si multiple times, uh, for example, to uh, to do that. So we thought we need to improve this game, keep the basics and the, the, the success that it has. We want to keep that, but we will want to improve it as well. So we looked at what can we do. Um, and there were three things that we found that we wanted to do. First one is that we want to bring in licensing. Second one is to uh, make it a mobile first game. So to really look out at it and say, what does it need to be great on mobile? Not on the browser where it came from, but on mobile. And then last one, a new business model. Licenses are very expensive and we needed to pay them. So we thought, how can we make more money? Some of our competitors earn a lot more uh, from their user base than we did. So 11 May, we, uh, we launched and that's a few weeks ago. And if it didn't work, then of course I had to now have to tell you that it didn't work. So I had a very uh, interesting talk maybe to f failure, but of course it worked. So I can tell you that, uh, well, that the new game is great, but some of my co colleagues can do that even better. Uh, so I will start a short video uh, again of one minute where they explain some of the highlights of the new game. This is the brand new OSN. Still your favorite football management game, but now with a fresh new design that fits our modern time perfectly. The new Durak, the staff behind your team, and a completely new look and feel. We now offer our managers a lot more than the previous version of our game. You decide which tools are important to achieve greatness. Training a player multiple times a day, instantly scouting, it's all possible. This makes it your very own strategy. We've worked on something our users have been asking for for years. We've closed some partnerships with some major leagues and clubs. And are now able to use player portraits and club logos inside our game. This uncovers the true face behind your team. That's authenticity. Right, so that's uh, OSM3. And uh, I want to go into the concepts that make it better than the previous version. Um, and what's interesting here is that I think uh, some of these are applicable to other games as well. So if you have a game or you want to create a game, uh, you can look at this. And this is not just some theory. This is really happens. Uh, so maybe you can do some something with that if you're a game designer. Um, first, licensing. We wanted to bring licensing into the game. And why licenses? That was something that was asked because it's very expensive to buy licensing for football football uh, uh, clubs. Uh, and we thought licensing is key to be to stand out in the App Store, to be able to uh, give the football fan what he really wants, the, the portraits of the players, the logos of the clubs. So you see the logo of your favorite club, you see the portraits of your favorite players, that would be awesome, we thought. I'm a football uh, lover myself, uh, so I could imagine that th this make the game uh, very much better. And you, if you look at other games, some of other games are doing this very effectively. Um, for example, a game of war. We saw uh, just now how many they make every day. Uh, they use some, uh, well, of course, they use Kate Upton. I like to use Kate Upton in some commercial as well, but uh, football players are mu much not as attractive to look at, but okay, you get, you get the point. Um, Mobile Strike, they use Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Top 11, of course, has Mourinho, which is we just signed with uh, Manchester United, so I think they are happy with that. So we thought we have to bring licensing in OSM. And Online Soccer Manager is really um, suitable for licensing as well, because we have, uh, we have all the teams and all the clubs in there already, just not with the logos and the photos. So what we did to get the licensing is go all over the world and make partnerships with various parties. So I actually went to Italy and uh, guys for us went to Brazil and to Spain and uh, every place to secure licenses. And we managed to get quite a few. Of course, not all, we want, we want more, but this is a list that we currently have. So for example, the Eredivisie, the Dutch Eredivisie, I'm very proud of that. Also the Belgian uh, uh, league. And uh, we're working on some major other leagues. So hopefully in a few years we will have, for example, the Spanish and the English league. Of course we want Premier League in there. 
So that's our ambition. Then the second thing we wanted to improve, mobile first. So how may do you make a, a good game, let's call it a good game, better and mobile first? Um, the term do we thought of was more intense sessions with friends. We created some design goals, so everything what that was in the game was redeveloped, and we applied these design goals to make them better in a certain direction. So it was increased decision intensity, more sessions, and play with friends. And the metric that we used to measure these improvements, if they actually improved or not, is retention. So how many players are still left after one day, seven days, 30 days after they sign up? Well, the first one, increased decision intensity, is a difficult one, but it's very important. We didn't have a tutorial, so people came in and they didn't know what to do. They had to learn it from other people, and of course we had an installed base, so that worked for some. But to bring it, make it bigger, we needed a tutorial. We brought in surfacing, which means uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, features in OSM, such as uh, going on a training camp, uh, uh, choosing sponsors, things like that. But some people didn't know how to use them or didn't know where to find them. It's actually strange that, for example, uh, training camps is something that people use on the wrong times. A training camp is used in OSM to prepare your um, team for the next match, but some people use it in preparation. And then there is no next match. So they didn't know where, where it was for. So this is something that we improved. And finally, we brought in some context. So if you make a decision, you should see what it has, what kind of effect it has. It's very important because this is a strategy game after all. So that's about increased decision intensity. Then we looked at the sessions. I already told you one session a day. That was how OSM worked. But if you look at this graph here, you see that people pick up their phone 150 times a day. A lot of this is to, to, to do calls or to, to look at the time, but there are 12 sessions for gaming. We need to claim more of those sessions. If people play OSM, they need to play it every day and the all day long. Not uh, an hour uh, in one time, but just a minute and then another minute somewhere else on the day. So we thought we, we need to achieve five to 10 sessions. That would be nice. Well, how did we do, do that? We brought in a very familiar concept for most people, uh, timers. So for example, if you train your player, uh, it will now take eight hours instead of an all day. It looks like this. This is an animation. So you can uh, claim your training after you uh, train him. And then he will improve in his uh, skill. And we applied this concept to several other um, game features as well. So, for example, to stadium upgrades, to scouting, uh, that's all working with timers now. Now, of course, uh, it's not uh, one hour, but it's six hours, eight hours, and that way we generate more sessions a day. And also, it, the game is much more interesting if you come in and there's always something for you to do. It's always something that you can be rewarded for. That's important. And the last thing that we wanted to improve was play with friends. Online Soccer Manager, I think any casual game, is most powerful because you can play it with your friends. We found a great tool which is called branch.io. I encourage you to look it up if you're interested in this uh, thing. And it make enables it, this is a very complicated graph, but it enables it, enables the game, uh, gamers to invite each other from different platforms. So for example, I am on iOS, my friend is on web, I can invite him, the other way around is the same. So. And for example, if I don't have the app installed, it automatically installs the app, and then we find each other in the game. And that's very important. So the invitation process is much, much more simple than it used to be. Now, finally, there to pay for all this, we needed to rethink our business model. The old business model is like this. We have uh, ads, we have subscriptions, and we had what we call private funds. In Dutch, it was called eigen vermogen. Um, and if we look at these three, uh, these are the percentages. So which one should we improve? Well, we decided to improve the last one uh, because the other two were not scalable. We saw in al other games that especially um, some people uh, spend a lot of money on a game. If you have a subscription, you can only spend, in our case, three euros, two euros per month on the, on the game, and that's it. 
You get a lot for that, but you cannot spend more even if you want other things. So we changed the business model to more deep spending, it's called. And this is uh, the people that we are targeting with that. It's, uh, they are called whales. Some people just spend a lot in a game. And that's not a lot of people. 0.2% of the total user base ever uses these features. But they amount already in the old version to 40% of the spendings. And it is becoming even more in the new version. So what we should we do to uh, um, encourage these whales to spend more in the game? without making it pay to play, of course. And that's what we did by bringing them into the core game loop. We uh, called the new virtual currency, we introduced a new virtual currency, we called it Boss Coins. And if you are in the game and you uh, do the standard loop that you do every day, then you need to find places where you can spend them. So transfers, training, friendlies, that's where we brought in some spending options so people could uh, spend money there if they want it. It's not, not an uh, obligatory, you can play for free, and still a very great game to play for free. If you want, you can spend there. And of course, you can also view uh, ads and get rewarded for that, or you can uh, get achievements and get rewarded for that. So those are, those are all kinds of things that you can do to be rewarded with boss coins. With the boss coins, we brought the uh, monetization of the game to industry standards. Our revenue, and I can uh, announce it now, is, has increased by more than 150%. That's, that's really, <laughs> I'm really happy with that, as you can imagine. And some people think, well, okay, thinking about gaming and making money is maybe not so great, but it allows you to buy more licensing, to buy more marketing uh, efforts. It, it allows you to do a lot and to get more players into your game. So I'm really happy that we succeeded with the new boss business model to make more money in the game and still have it a fun game for uh, the other users because the user base hasn't shrunk after the uh, new version has been released. Of course, we were a little afraid for that, that, that might happen, but it didn't happen. So, wrap up the new version. Uh, we increased revenue. We also increased the user retention with the features that I showed. 50% it went up. So, of everyone who plays the game after seven days, more people are still there. They enjoy the game more. That's, that's the, the way that we interpret that. And we did that with licensing. We did it with the more intense sessions with friends, um, design goals, and of course, we did it with the boss coins in the core loop. Now, to wrap, to end the presentation, I want to show you one thing that, unfortunately, we worked one and a half years on the new game. And some features had to be scrapped because otherwise we would have worked another year on, on, the, on the game. And uh, we are working on some very cool new stuff. And I want to show you one concept art of the new match experience, the scoreboard. Uh, that is, unfortunately, it's not uh, ready yet. We're working on it now. And I want to introduce it later this year, where you can uh, experience the match that you have played in the game. This is what it looks like. One of our design designers made this. And what happens is, uh, if there is an event in the game, you get something like this, this with game cards. Of course, the, the player portraits are there. So hopefully we can present this in the real game uh, soon uh, for you. And this uh, repeats endlessly. So this uh, ends my talk and I want to thank you for your attention. And of course, download the app and become football manager when you have the, please do that. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Jeroen. So you were not in an attic with a server, you were behind the stairs in your parents' uh, area, yeah. growing your business. Really interesting and also nice to have a sneak preview to uh, uh, the next features. Is there a question from the audience? I'm looking at all of them. Anything you want to ask? Um, perhaps something you can say if, if, if these people want to start their own business, some, you know, things you want to give them or, 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 or takeaways or pay attention to or do not do this that may be helpful for them? Yeah, I think that uh, every anyone knows this, but it's always very difficult to do. Uh, start with a quick prototype. Show it to your friends, and if they're bored after 10 minutes, start something new. Uh, online Soccer Manager in the beginning, when I made that, this was the first thing that I ever made. I, I can program, so but I was a bit of a nerd. Um, so my friends didn't like the stuff that I was working with uh, and 
this game, I, I didn't have to motivate them to play that. I was on, on birthday parties and they were talking to each other about the game, even wi without me. So that was how I saw that it was something bigger than just something that I enjoyed and maybe some one or two of my friends. Yeah, good answer. Any uh, follow-up questions from the audience? Then um, I think in around 10 minutes we have Nelly uh, Smit Kroos on the, on the main stage, so that may be interesting for you to see. I want to thank Jeroen very much for his talk and thank you for your time. This concludes the speaker sessions uh, here on this stage. There will be challenges, but no more talks. So please uh, look at uh, Nelly and uh, have fun today. Thank you very much.